in the post-COVID era, handling export documentation in the post-COVID era, and we're discussing paperwork. Paperwork is a major challenge for many that want to come into this space. Uh, and the challenge basically is understanding the role of paperwork and how to go about it in such a manner as to ensure that at the end of the day, they reduce the delays. International trade is likely a business of documentation. So being able to handle paperwork is a skill that is extremely necessary that everyone thinking of going into that space must of necessity acquire. Remember, this is a series of training programs. Uh, we've done quite a lot. Um, we're at number 10 now. We'll be doing number 11 next week. And then we'll do number 12 and 13. Then, like I said, the last time, number 14 is going to take us for, by, for about three, four months. That's um, exporting to African continent under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Uh, explain the African continent under the African continental free trade agreement. So today I have, as usual, my um, preamble. And I'll be repeating what I've said severally. Um, so pardon me if you have heard me talk about this before. It's just a way of reminding ourselves of where we used to be and the fact that we can still go to where we used to be. The collapse of Nigerian economy, the collapse of Nigerian economy and uh, in the hand of, it's in our hand rather, and white dollar is falling and 80 Naira. In 1980, the metrics are as follows. Now, when you look at the metric in 1980, for me, in as much as it's a painful one, it's also an encouraging one for me an encouraging one because an encouraging one because it's making me realize the fact that if we have done it before, then we can do it again. So that for me should be a very, very encouraging one for anyone actually. That look, if we have done it before, that means we can do it again. That means it's not really rocket science the way some people make us to want to believe. You know, sometimes some of our leaders make us to believe some of these things, we can't do it. They will even, because of what some people want to eat, they will even prefer to go and get someone from outside to come and do what we can do from Nigeria. In 1980, we are net exporter of refined petroleum products. Today, that is not the case. Today, that is not the case. We are a, an importer. And in fact, more than 10% of our import, that's over $5 billion. More than 10% of our import is actually PMS. We ride in locally assembled cars, bus, truck, Pojo cars in Kaduna, Volkswagen cars in Lagos, Leland in Ibadan, and Namco in Enugu all of them producing buses and trucks, steer in Bauchi producing agricultural tractor. And it's not just assembling, no. They were producing many of the components locally. Bono product in Lagos produced the seat for the cars. Exide in Ibadan produced the battery for the cars. Not just for Nigeria, for the entire West Africa. ISO glass and TSG in Ibadan produced the windshield for the cars. Ferrodo in Ibadan produced the brake pad and disc for the cars. Tire produced by Dunlop in Lagos and Michelin in Paracot. These tires were not produced from rubber imported, but rather rubber cultivated in Den, River State, and currently Delta State. We were listening to radio and television set assembled in Ibadan by Sanyo. We were using refrigerator freezer and air condition produced by Thermocool. We were wearing clothes produced from UNTL textile mill in Kaduna and Cheram in Lagos. Not from imported cotton, but from cotton grown in Nigeria. Our water were running through pipe produced by Quali Pipe in Kano. Our toilets were fitted with WC produced at Kano and Abeokuta. We are cooking with LPG gas 
stored inside gas cylinder produced at NGC factory in Ibadan. Our electricity was flowing through cables produced by Nigerian wire and cable, Ibadan, and then carbon metal in Lagos and Podako. We had butter and linens producing shoes we were wearing, not from imported leather, but a leather produced locally and tanned in Kaduna. We were mainly flying our own airways, the Nigerian airways, to most places in the world. And this was one of the biggest in Africa. Most of our food were grown and produced locally in Nigeria. We we're producing all of the above in 1980. Today, we import almost everything, including toothpicks, including corn, including so many things we can produce locally, including wheat. There lies the source of the terrible exchange rate we are experiencing today because for us to import, we need to use our exchange, uh, foreign exchange. So we are depleting our foreign reserve and that make exchange rate to go up. And everybody on this platform has a critical role to play in reversing the ugly trend. So for your desire to export, not just to make money, you make money in the process, but also remember is of good importance to our nation. It's not enough for us to complain about the exchange rate or bring, uh, or bring out what others are not doing or failing to do. The key question is, what are you doing? What are you producing? And what are you planning to produce? This is why at Internet Academy, we have decided to control our own quota to reversing the negative trend through this weekly free webinar. Remember, we have a Telegram channel. If you are new and you desire to have a playback of this video, then you will do well to join the Telegram channel. I've dropped the link to the Telegram channel right in the chat so you can really click on the link and then you can join the Telegram channel. And then you can have access to the previous videos and the one we are doing right now. Also remember that you can end with ease through our referral program, a 10% um, income or commission that you get when you refer anyone for our diploma in export business management or diploma in export trade finance. COVID is engulfing our world. That is no more news. And the, what COVID has done to us is unprecedented. In fact, one of the major areas of international trade that COVID has badly affected is the issue of documentation. Is the issue of documentation. Documentation is a big deal in international trade. And the issue of documentation is one of the areas that have been badly affected by COVID. And I'll be talking a lot about that today, the fact that we are having a big challenge So sorry for the break in transmission. Um, back now, I had an issue with my network. Um, COVID is engulfing our world. COVID is changing the way we sleep, the way we love, the way we walk, the way we walk. And uh, we need to adapt to that change. We need to adapt to that change. And that, that thing is highly imperative because our world will not remain the same again. And that's affecting trade particularly documentation in trade. And I'll be talking about that maybe later today or sometimes next week. You are very more familiar with the sector that have been affected. I've shown this in the past. Uh, the um, medical, food processing, personal, healthcare, mm -hmm. and the like that are the beneficiary. Food processing, personal healthcare, ICT, e-commerce, agri are the beneficiary, whereas Leo, tourism, 
aviation, automobile, construction, manufacturing, financial services, and education and loser, where oil and gas is both winner and loser. And technology is making people in education and uh, financial services to still move to the green zone because they are leveraging on ICT to still be able to deliver their value and deliver their services despite the impact of COVID. Despite the impact of COVID. Despite.